Welcome back to DXB. Today, we are discussing education and learning, all different types of learning, whether it be online, whether it be micro, whether it be distance, all that encompasses what we are understanding of really excelling our minds and our bodies. Now, our next guest is the founder of an innovative platform, making education more relevant and more accessible by intersecting digital and physical learning spaces. So please welcome Mr. Wonderful, wonderful, fantastic Carl Morris from online. <laughs> nice to meet you. Thank Thanks you. for having me. Really good to see you, buddy. Um, so let's get straight into it. When it comes to learning and AI, are you with it? Are you not with it? I think AI is, a re is, is an interesting development. It's going gonna, it's gonna to change industries all over the world. And we see the recent announcement from OpenAI and Khan Academy. We see these really interesting use cases with, with tutors. I think it's never going to be educator out of the loop type thing. Uh, and I think that's mainly because of the engagement factor. If you actually get students using AI, it is still primarily just a chatbot and they don't see the inherent engagement factor in it, whereas we as adults might say, oh, this is super cool, it can do this thing. Um, kids don't necessarily see it. And so I think the educator's now role is to use it as a tool for engagement, to try and build engaging applications on the top of it. Carl, tell us a little bit about the online school where you're the CEO of. What sort of work do you do? Uh, what sort of courses uh, and who's it for? So we're a combination of things. We have some students who are full-time with us with their entire education. We have other students where we work with, uh, with their school on a hybrid model. Um, and we offer really experiential learning, which is something that we felt was a gap in the online schooling space. So you, a, a typical day with us wouldn't be a series of Teams calls. It would be moving through our platform, which has custom built learning experiences throughout the day to sort of mirror what you might get in a traditional school. So we, we really uh, focused on peer-to-peer -peer learning experiences, consolidating what you know, going up beyond the typical delivery of information. Do you think that, I know that you're capping some of your classes, do you think that you have some big expansion plans in the region or how are you looking at the future? Yeah, so we started working with students this September and we capped our intake at 30 students because we wanted to make sure our model was going to work uh, in the first place. Uh, we've had really great feedback, the partners, the, the school partners that we've got have been um, instrumental in honing what our learning experience is like and we've got a really big waiting list so we are ready to expand next year. Carl, when I was going through your website, uh, one particular thing that caught my attention was that the one-size-fits-all approach to education overlooks one important thing, which is that every learner is unique and the program that you have offers limitless flexibility. Can you explain a little bit about what that is? Yeah, so what we do with our model is we're a combination of asynchronous, synchronous learning. So we actually have our own studio in Dubai where we film hundreds of hours of content. And what we do is we augment that content. We're a flipped classroom. So the students learn through our content and then they come and meet a tutor on demand. So imagine you're working through a maths problem and you think, oh, I just don't know how to do this. You click a button, you see which of our math tutors are online, you get your question answered in a few minutes and then you carry on learning. So we're trying to make that unsticking of problems immediate rather than uh, waiting until next week when I have my next math lesson. And that's how we offer flexibility. And then because students are leading themselves, they get a really truly personalized experience. So Carl, one thing that I discussed earlier and we were thinking about was the whole social aspect. It's, it, it's hard when it's online. But do you, how do you combat something like that when it comes to socialising online? So it's an interesting one and I think that students and, and young people will have to develop more digital communication skills. We all discovered in the pandemic that actually having a Teams call is really different from sitting with other people, but it's a necessary skill to learn. Uh, but what we find is because of the way that we educate, it is, it's efficient and it's flexible, which allows students to actually take part in more extracurricular activities, where we believe the majority of those formative experiences should be, and they can have you know, tennis in the middle of the day if they choose with their friends, whereas they might not be able to do that in a traditional setting or they may be too tired to do it after school. So what we found is most of our students end up being far more social and we get parents telling us, you know, you gave my child their childhood back. Well, the thing about students is some of them can be 
a little bit lazy. And we were talking about AI <laughs> earlier on, and yeah. I know it's something we can use. Dubai, one of the best places for advancing AI technology and integrating it. What about students who are actually abusing AI to do their coursework? How do you combat something like that? It's all about reframing the question. So us as educators, we shouldn't be saying, well, we're just gonna use an, an AI detector tool and that is how we're gonna discover what you were doing. We accept that students are using AI, so we make the question different. So we make the question less about the factual knowledge that you are uh, presenting and more about how you're presenting it. That is much harder to do with AI. You'll find that most responses from an AI generator are dry and they lack personality. So what we do is we accept, we even allow you or encourage you to use AI, but we make sure that part of our grading rubric encourages you to have that individual uniqueness, a bit of you in it. I'm just curious, I mean, there's a lot of development pieces around this. Where do you do the development of all of this software and all of the training and all of those pieces? Here in Dubai, so we actually have a, have a studio in JLT. Uh, most of our uh, team is based here, most of our full-time teaching <coughs> team is based here in Dubai. Um, so we do a lot of the development here, we do all the content creation here. Uh, and we chose Dubai, I've been here for about eight, nine years, and it is a hub of innovation. It, it makes it easier to come up with new ideas and be flexible and actually to bounce ideas around with others. That's what we found here and that's why we settled here. And you're a Liverpool supporter, so that makes a difference. <laughs> That's why I said you're a good man at the beginning. I'm like, yeah, mate. <laughs> Carl, thank you so much for coming on the show, bridging the gap between uh, the classroom and real world skills. Thank you so much for coming and sharing about the online school with us. Thank you for having me. Now, moving on, today's Spotlight is on a platform offering skill-based learning for the youth in the city through the integration of robust technology in a personalized and experiential learning environment. This is Rajani Nala from Trust City. Hi, I'm Rajani Nala, founder and CEO of True City. We are a skill tech and an ed tech platform that is focused on building 21st century skills and employability skills in children and youth. We're addressing the global skills gap problem. According to a PwC report, 85 million jobs are going to remain unfilled owing to skill shortages, resulting in a loss of $8.5 trillion. And according to the World Economic Forum, 65% of students entering into primary school today will end up in jobs that do not yet exist. And therefore, it's imperative we focus on upskilling and reskilling the current generation so that they are better prepared for the future job market and the evolving landscape. We've been in the market for close to four years, and as of now, we have over 40,000 students registered on the platform, 550 plus teachers, handpicked tutors from across the world, multiple strategic partnerships and collaborations with schools and universities, over 75 plus project ideas that our young entrepreneurs have developed, which are aligned with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals that are focused on clean energy, sustainability, and quality education for all. While well, hiring top talent and retaining top talent in the initial years was difficult, so building a tech startup from grounds up, it's not everyone's cup of tea. The long-term goal for True City is to become a global skill tech platform that leverages technology, artificial intelligence, immersive learning environments, experiential learning, and to build a future-ready generation and a positive and sustainable world. Dubai is an excellent space to establish and run a business because most of the governmental regulations and processes, they're pretty much streamlined and add to it the digitalization aspect of it. It is easy to execute and implement. And yes, Dubai is a microcosm of the world, so it has rich diversity and culture, therefore encouraging global ideas and innovation, making it an environment where companies can establish and thrive and also plan for long-term business growth. 
Thanks for that, Rajani. Now we are about to take a little bit of a break and coming up after that, we are gonna be meeting the co-founder of the first of its kind venture company in the UAE talking all about EdTech ventures. We're talking Reimagined Collective. That's coming up as well as some fantastic music as well. Don't go anywhere.